across YouTube and live from the History Roadshow Studios in London, welcome to the 2023 Christmas Special with your host, Father Christmas. Ho, ho, hello and a very Merry Christmas to all our viewers at home and around the world. Welcome to our special holiday edition of History Roadshow. I'm your host, Father Christmas, well, at least for today, hoping to spread some cheer and fascinating historical tidbits this festive season. I hope you're all nestled comfortably and ready for a journey through Christmas past. Tonight we have a wonderful lineup for you. We'll be delving into the annals of history to bring some of the most interesting and lesser known stories from Christmases of yore. Expect tales of joy, wonder and perhaps a few surprises along the way. We're also thrilled to welcome some special guests who'll be sharing their Christmas messages with you on this festive season. And stay tuned to the end as we have a great finale with something you can all sing along to. But unfortunately, he's not my favourite singer. Of course, the one and only Elvis Presley. So stay tuned, grab a glass of mulled wine, sit back and relax. And welcome to History Roadshow's Christmas Special. Thanks for joining me today, I'm going to begin with a look back to the days of the Tudors, especially their time throughout the Christmas period. And here's Henry himself to take you through it. For the Tudors, Advent, the 40-day period leading up to Christmas, was a time of spiritual preparation and penance. Faithful Christians engaged in fasting, refraining from meat, cheese and eggs to ready themselves for Christ's arrival. This period of austerity made the Christmas Day feast, planned meticulously during Advent, gratifying. In England, decorating homes for Christmas did not initially involve Christmas trees, a custom that blossomed in Germany and only gained popularity in England in the 19th century. Instead, the Tudors adorned their homes with kissing boughs crafted from evergreens like holly and bay, often decorated with apples and always featuring mistletoe. These boughs, hanging from ceilings on wooden frames, symbolized the season's cheer. The fir tree's evergreen branches, symbolizing eternal life, have deep roots in Christian tradition. According to legend, in 1536, Martin Luther, struck by the beauty of stars shining through a forest's branches, was inspired to recreate this scene at home with a candlelit fir tree intending to illustrate the heavenly origin of Christ to his children. The earliest known instance of a decorated tree in England dates back to the 15th century, with a candle-lit fir tree on a London street, a solitary record of the practice at that time. Another amazing insight, but you know what I don't understand? Is why Christmas trees are so bad at sewing. Someone told me it's because they keep dropping their needles. Anyhow, thanks. Yeah, thanks for that. Okay, now, ladies and gents, we have a couple of messages from two of our guests tonight. Hello, I'm Anne Boleyn. Merry Christmas to all, with joy and love in your hearts. Let peace and happiness reign this festive season. Hello, Elizabeth I here. A Merry Christmas to all my subjects. May this Yuletide bring peace and prosperity to our realm. Thanks to both Anne and Elizabeth for that. We have more to come later in the show. For now, let's turn our attention to what times were like in the Victorian era. Back to you, Henry. Like many of us, Queen Victoria and Prince Albert relished a Christmas turkey savoured with all the trimmings in a family gathering. Their royal Christmas dinner was a lavish affair, featuring multiple courses, including mince pies, starters, soups and chipolatas, often rounded off with a plum pudding. The royal feast could extend to rich dishes like beef or boar's head along with a variety of cold meats. In contrast, Victorian England's general populace, often not as affluent, centered their festive meals around a bird, typically a goose, as famously depicted in Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. 
Some families even joined goose clubs to save up for this special meal throughout the year. Today's Christmas meals, often featuring turkey, echo these Victorian traditions. The Victorians didn't invent the concept of Christmas gift giving, but they embraced it wholeheartedly. Gifts were exchanged on Christmas Eve, a contrast to the modern practice of opening presents on Christmas Day. In the royal household, Queen Victoria preferred having unwrapped gifts displayed on tables, similar to their birthday traditions. Her diaries mention various gifts exchanged, including jewelry, art, and homemade crafts from the children and grandchildren. For less wealthy Victorians, while elaborate gift giving wasn't feasible, the spirit of sharing gifts was still a cherished part of their Christmas celebrations. Wow, you know when I was a little Santa, I remember one Christmas getting a broken drum. You just can't beat it. <laughs> but now it's time to welcome more guests with their Christmas messages. Hi, I'm Morgan Freeman, and I'd like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas filled with warmth and joy. May your holidays be bright. Hello, I am Marie Antoinette. Joyeux Noël to all. May your days be merry and your hearts full with love and delight. Thanks once again to all our guests on the show and we still have more to come. But okay, for now, back to our Christmas stories from the past. Now imagine yourself back in the cold dark days of the Neolithic period, the days of Stonehenge and what significance it still plays in today's world. The midwinter solstices on December 21st, the shortest day of the year, held great significance for the builders and users of Stonehenge. On this day, the monument aligns with the sunrise, a testament to its creator's astronomical knowledge. Excavations at nearby Darrington Walls reveal that Neolithic people celebrated this time with grand feasts, consuming large amounts of pork and beef, some from distant lands, their diet also included dairy products and beverages, like barley beer or honey-based mead, enjoyed from ornate pottery beakers, a hallmark of late Neolithic culture. During this midwinter period, prized gifts often included bronze daggers, a novel material supplanting stone and flint for tools and weaponry, likely imported from Europe's more advanced metalworking society. Wealthy individuals adorned themselves with gold jewelry, necklaces, and possibly hair decorations and buttons for their garments. These celebrations might have featured singing, playing bone flutes, and leaping over bonfires as tributes to the sun, invoking its return to lengthen the days once more. Hello, I am Charles Dickens. A Merry Christmas to all. May your hearts be light and your spirits bright throughout this festive season. Henry here, wishing a Merry Christmas to all my subjects near and far. Let your homes be filled with grand feasts, laughter, and joyous song. Rejoice in this festive season and cherish these moments of merriment and goodwill. That was so good. Thanks again to everyone who has appeared on our show today. You know, singing is such an integral part of any celebration. I mean, earlier this month we had a party for snowman we all joined in that classic Fareez, a jolly good fellow <laughs> yeah I know thanks okay thank you okay so we're almost at the end now but remember if you've enjoyed this special there's so much more to see on the channel and in 2024 we're aiming higher than ever so please like this video share and of course subscribe to the channel and if you really love our content consider becoming a member we have some great perks backstage just for you Twent and I, I personally would like to wish each and every one of you a very Merry Christmas and a peaceful New Year. 2023 is almost at an end and hopefully things happening now across the world will cease in the coming 12 months and we can all live a happy and fulfilled life once again. Thank you so much for watching History Roadshow's Christmas Special. Merry Christmas everyone. Merry Christmas. Christmas is coming, the snowflakes will be falling, it's the most wonderful time of year. So hang up your stockings, put the tinsel on the tree, 
Because Christmas is coming, my dear It's the only time of year the reindeer fly You can't see them on the sleigh ride across the sky Gather all your family round Or go out and paint the town It's the only time of year the whole wide world turns upside down So baby, light a fire and we'll toast the night away Because Christmas is coming our way Christmas is coming Christmas is coming Christmas is coming 